The dirty flirty thirties. How old do you have to be before you can't be dirty, f- dirty flirty thirty anymore? Uh, forty, probably. You can't be dirty flirty thirty at forty. No. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band Good Time Podcast, the only podcast that identifies, biographies, and signifies and Sigmund Freudifies with a Coke. Still back like saying that. It's fun. Put the Coke back in the Coca-Cola. <laughs> All the figures on the Beatles 1967 album, Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Club Band. Today's episode, Tommy, Tommy Handley and Marilyn Monroe. Hey, real quick. Oh. Talking about Sigmund Freudifying. We didn't. I. This is. These are all blur now. We didn't mm-hmm. do Sigmund. We did Sigmund Freud already. No, we didn't. We did not do Sigmund Freud yet. No, that's in the future. He's definitely going to be a can of Coke, right? <laughs> With his, um, yeah, but he's in like a bear, like a polar bear costume, like like the Coke bears. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Can he just be a polar bear holding the holding the bottle of Coke, but also have like a Coke a mustache? Cigar. Oh. That, yeah, a cocaine mustache, cocaine not mustache. a Coca Cola mustache. It'll be hard to see, but you get a good artist; they can draw the shadowing around the right. Yeah, cocaine's have to... got to be a different shade than polar bear. Tommy Handley. Uh, I never heard of this guy before. I haven't either, but he's pretty interesting. He was an English comedian who lived from January 17th, 1892 until January 9th, 1949. He was just shy of 57 years old. Tommy served in the Royal Naval Air Service during World War I. Towards the end of the war, he was uh, in a kite balloon. He served on a kite balloon, which is like a hot air balloon shaped like a penis. I had to look up pictures to see what it looks I'm like, a, but it, a kite balloon. It's called a kite balloon, and it's like a like a very phallic shaped uh, hot air balloon. He also performed in concert party uh, f- concert parties for the troops, which concert party is not what it sounds like. I had to look up what that was too. A concert party is also a party. I think means group in mm-hmm. this context, like a concert group. They also would call it a Pierrot Troop. I think that's how you pronounce it. And the reason it's called that is because there's some real old-timey, like, uh, comedy bits, like Punch and Judy style, where, like, everyone would do these performances, but it was this character named Pierrot who was, like, a sad clown, and he was in love with this girl named Columbine, and she was super hot. Like, she wasn't a clown. She was just a super hottie. But she would break Perot's heart for uh, this way cooler clown named Harlequin who was super cool and could possibly do magic. So there's like a whole, it's like a Shakespearean kind of tragedy story that people like to act out back in the 1800s. Um, Aubrey Beardsley drew a lot of pictures of the Pierrot clown. Beardsley, he's back. Yeah, if the you look back. up, Audrey, I, I looked up some pictures, and there's a whole lot of black and white clown drawings that look very sad. Uh, Han- Hanley was best known as the star of It's That Man Again, a BBC radio show that ran for 10 years starting in 1939. Uh it's That Man Again is widely considered to have been a massive morale boost for the troops during World War II. So apparently he was really good at making soldiers laugh. Tommy Handley, on and off the battlefield. It's good. You got to keep it light. When how, you do you, how do you make soldiers laugh now? Uh, you, you tickle them? I don't know. What? <laughs> no, how do you make soldiers laugh in a cerebral sense? Um, Modern soldiers. Like, what's funny... What's funny to modern soldiers? I guess it's got to be morbid, you know, like interesting ways of, I don't know, I'm thinking like torture sort of stuff, like, or, <laughs> or like comparing it to video games, like, like making combos, you know, just trying to get like world star videos. <laughs> they just like watching uh, surprise knockouts. 
<laughs> or like um, uh, most extreme elimination, yeah, sort of stuff. Okay, but, like just bloodier. I don't yeah, know. I, I, I feel see that. like they want to see like blood and gore and guts and, and veins in the teeth. Yeah, back in the '30s, they just wanted to watch Mickey Mouse cartoons. They were Simpler times, blowing each other away, <laughs> stepping on landmines, and then going back and like. Someone had a reel-to-reel projector, and they're like, we got Steamboat Willie. <laughs> you just forgot your best friend's dead. <laughs> well, then you remember when you're enjoying Steamboat Willie, you're like, man, I wish Bob was here. To... This is the best part. <laughs> Bob loved this part. <laughs> it's when Peg Lake Pete was going ham. <laughs> yeah, I guess by the middle of the war, over 40% of the British population were listening to the show. 40%? 40, over 40%. It was unprecedented. Wow. It might have been as popular as Amos and Andy. I didn't look up the stats on Amos and Andy, but they used to stop movies like in the theater so that they could play Amos and Andy. That was in the U.S., though. I'm surprised, uh, I'm surprised Amos and Andy aren't on the cover, to be honest with you. They couldn't have had like the blackface Amos and Andy, but they could have put the two Jewish guys, Freeman Gosden and Charles Carell, are there are there actually any Jews on the cover of Sergeant Pepper? Um, yeah, actually. How many? Uh, don't know the number, but uh, without giving it away, Marilyn Monroe actually converted uh, toward the end of her life for a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure there's a few others on there too. Oh. All right. Well, I'm almost yeah. done. I want to hear about that because I had no idea. <laughs> I always thought she was a sh- shiksa. Shiksa. Yeah. But it's that man again. It's that man again. It's that man again. It was named after a headline about Adolf Hitler. (laughs) I swear to God. The show ended in 1949 when Handley died suddenly of a cerebral hemorrhage. This dude got a VCR tape and he was like, I don't have a VCR. And then he looked at his stomach and he had a VCR flap on his stomach. So he's like, okay. Doesn't question it at all. Just like, like, oh, I got one right in my body. And he puts the VCR tape into his stomach. You never saw that movie? I saw it. I don't remember it like that. I remember Debbie Harry. Did she get naked? Uh, I think she does in it, yeah. There's a bunch of nakedness in that movie. It's a lot of body transformation. Cronenberg does not shy. Away from the I think at one point his hand turns into a gun and then he shoots himself in the head with his own hand. He does like a finger gun, (laughs) but it works. That's the Cronenberg universe for you. That's what I that's where I feel like we are right now. Golden Ox Studios. Golden Ox. Golden Ox Studios. Here in Cleveland, Ohio. Every time we leave, we we somehow live to see another day. And every time we come here, something else new, too. We got some taxidermy happening. Mm -hmm. That's good. That adds to the aesthetic for sure. Where'd that come from, Jeremy? Oh, he's out collecting roadkill again. Makes sense. Well, I've been making friends with a squirrel actually on my back porch. I call him, call him Rocky Chunks. (laughs) He he just uh, he likes it there. He just sits. I could take. I have taken pictures of him. Actually, it's real nice having a new friend. You named him after like a like a mob muscle guy. The guy that breaks someone's fingers. <laughs> well, you're going to get Rocky Chunks over here. <laughs> if you don't start acting. Rocky Chunks is going to hide your nuts. <laughs> I got Rocky from Rocky and Bowwinkle. He ain't even going to remember where he put him. He's going to bury him in so many different places. <laughs> He's only going to find 30% of your nuts. Rocky Chunks. You can't use him again anyway. He's going to smash your nuts up good and bury them all over the park. He's going to roast them. <laughs> going to roast them over open fire. Speaking of Rocky Chunks, let's hear about uh, let's hear about Marilyn Monroe. That's a great segue. Marilyn Monroe, if you don't know, uh, was an actress, American actress. Uh, lived, uh, born, and died in L.A. Um, her real name, Norma Jean, which you might all know from the Elton John song, mm-hmm. Candle in the Wind, which is about her. Um, she was the candle, and the wind was the... It was just life. I thought it was coming from under that sewer grate. Uh, 
Uh, so yeah, uh, born June first, uh, nineteen twenty-six, and passed away in uh, August fourth, nineteen sixty-two. Thirty-six years old. She just turned thirty-six. She would have been forty-one um, the day this picture was taken. Um, but uh, yeah, she uh, lived through like twelve different foster homes. She never met her dad. Her mother was mentally unstable, so Don didn't have much interaction with her either. And uh, at 16, she got married for the first time, first of three three marri- marriages that was she that, had. Was uh, that Joe DiMaggio? No, that was number two. Okay. Uh, this one, um, I don't take his name down. He was just the, like the neighbor boy. Uh, he was 21. She was 16. I guess it's the, the time yeah. then. Um, she was, uh, before she was a model and all that, she was working, uh, for the war effort. She was, um, like building, like, what was it? Um, definitely wasn't balloon kites, but, uh, something like that. <laughs> but she wishes she was working on balloon yeah. kites. Waxing those down. Uh, <laughs> no, she was, what was it again? Um, like parachutes working on that, uh, making like $20 a week, working like 10 hours a day. Uh, but then she uh, had her photo taken there for like women in the war efforts, and that's really all it took. Um, someone saw her face, and like she needs to be in more pictures. Um, also, Ronald Reagan apparently, uh, before he was president, uh, he put that whole film shoot together. That whole um, he was behind organizing like that picture that ended up making her pretty famous. Man, Ronald Reagan was like a real uh, Charlie Chaplin, wasn't he? <laughs> Just a true auteur. <laughs> Fingers in all the pots. Um, yeah, and then she started work, working for Fox. Uh, for only one year, they dropped her, and then uh, got picked up by Columbia in 47. Uh, then it was in 49 when um, she uh, took her clothes off and took that... That picture for Playboy, um, 50 bucks she got for that. That's all she ever saw of that. That was probably like a thousand bucks back then, though. She's even quoted as like not being like thanked by anyone that made like all the money and stuff off of that picture. Um, but yeah, she was the so first centerfold. Um, and uh, that's kind of a brave move, too, isn't it? For that time, because I feel like. Like what Betty Page, she was uh, like a complete counterculture like type person during that time because like she could, or a cult figure, you know, because that wasn't any kind of mainstream stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. Betty Page was also doing like a lot of like sexy like outfits and like black leather and stuff like that, I think. Mm-hmm. But my point is like she wasn't mainstream at all at that time. Marilyn Monroe was, like, doing something that I f- feel like a lot of people would have frowned upon back then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Because if that's the genesis of Playboy, that means that, like, no one had really done, like, uh, uh, like I mean, there were, like, those magazines, like, Look, right? Weren't there those magazines of girls in their underwear? And they were considered filthy. That was called, was called Look? I think it was called <laughs> Look. Yeah, I think there was a magazine that, that, I don't know. It's like Ooh La La from Back to the Future. Remember? Ooh La La. Ooh La La. Ooh La La. <laughs> Just like early girly mags, but they didn't even have nudity. It's like how Playboy is now. Yeah, they went they went away from that, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So she was in movies. Uh, after that, but apparently not. Um, I mean, you can, I don't know, you, you can judge for yourself how good of an actress she is, but apparently on set she was uh, a terrible like stage fright and would have to do some scenes like 36 times. Um, Jack Lemon, Jack Lemon, Yeah, from yeah. Some Like It Hot. Yeah, yep. um, he, uh, maybe him or maybe it was Tony Curtis uh, in an interview was saying how it took forever to make a movie with her. Uh, but then sometimes she get it in one shot also. But um, she uh, didn't think she was very good either. Uh, she had some weird quirks, too. She would put Vaseline on her face and her body to make her seem more luminous. Shiny? Yeah. Um, she would talk in the third person quite often also. 
uh, off camera. Um, That's cool, though. If she was actually humble, because you're saying that she wasn't very, oh, she openly wasn't very confident about her performance i would say mm. that's like a humbleness but then she's still yeah. referring to herself in the third Marilyn doesn't think she's very good <laughs> Marilyn could do much better if she put her mind to it <laughs> uh yeah so they kind of like stifled her a little bit she stifled herself with that um moving on to her next uh her next husband you you said it before uh dimaggio, DiMaggio. Yeah, they had a long distance thing for a while. Um, he was he Joe DiMaggio, um, one of the greatest ball players, played for the New York Yankees. Um, he wanted to meet her, and whatever Joe wants, Joe gets. So they met and hit it off, hit it off long enough to uh, get married. But uh, apparently, he wasn't the best of a husband, and didn't want her in the limelight as a sex symbol. And they divorced for mental cruelty under under those conditions. And uh, DiMaggio um, blames himself. For her death, which we'll get to. Yeah. Dum dum. Uh, but there's another another man in her life after that. Do you know who the third? I th- I know she was with someone after that. I thought it was like a millionaire or like some super rich industrialist. You're pretty close with Mill Miller, Arthur Miller. Arthur Miller. Yeah, the playwright. Oh. No, I forgot. I don't know. He was Jewish, which is going back to then she started um, getting into Judaism. Yeah, but what was her real biological last name? Mortensen. So wasn't she already Jewish to begin with? Mm, S O N. I don't know. Maybe. Or is that like <laughs> Vigo Mortensen? I think it's more like that. Okay. Yeah, she does look a little more uh, Vigo Mortensen than, you know, M- Mortensen and Mortensen's funeral home. <laughs> <laughs> Morty um, Mortensen's funeral. Yeah. Uh, she admitted herself into a psych ward because uh, she w- thought she was going crazy and it kind of ran in her family a little bit. And uh, the and then uh, August 8th, um, uh, it's said that she overdosed on a bunch of barbiturates. Uh, next to her bed were a whole bunch of empty pill bottles and stuff like that. And yeah, just sort of sad. Like she was never really... I'm really proud of herself for all that she had done and the icon that she became. Uh, she was well read too. She was always trying to read. She would always have these. She'd always be reading books, uh, like one on set. Um, big fan of Albert Einstein. Also, she had a framed picture of Albert Einstein. That's ha- awesome. Propped up on her uh, on her piano. <laughs> so th- like that was like her type, I guess. That's cool. I never really heard anything bad about her as a person. No. She also sort of began, like, one of the first people to speak out about the, like, Hollywood being really misogynist. uh, Because she was the victim of that um, time and time again. Saying, like, thinking she's going in for, like, an audition for something. And then guys are just trying to, like, grope her. Um, Oh, I'm sure. And she'd uh, speak out about that. And then we got the whole Kennedy thing, too. Yeah. With her. Um, may or may not have... Uh, well, who knows? Who knows, really? That's all real hush-hush. But since she was involved, her house was bugged by the the people that do the bugging of houses to, like... What, the, is the CIA? No, I think it was, like... So, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe the FBI or the special special... Secret Service. Secret Service. Um, yeah, maybe. Um, the Kennedys were Democratic, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I feel like it was like the Republican Party trying to get dirt on the Kennedys. Um, so they like bugged her house and uh, didn't get much, just her talking in third person to herself <laughs> in the mirror, <laughs> applying Vaseline. That's <laughs> probably all they really got. Trying to get those lines right. Diamonds are... Girl's best friend. Diamonds are. Diamonds, yeah. <laughs> diamonds are a girl's best friend. Uh, we gave the uh, bust measurements for Mae West when we did her episode. I feel like it's only fair to share Marilyn's. Uh, this is compared to Mae West. She was 35, 24, 35. That's better. Oh, well, that's Mae West. Yeah. That's Marilyn better. Monroe. I meant better than 36, 24, 36. Wait. No, 36 no. is better, right? 36 is bigger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So anyway, uh, Marilyn Monroe, 36, 24, 34. So pretty much, like, they could wear each other's clothes. Yeah. yeah. I thought you were going to say skin. I was going to be like, well, <laughs> technically their frames are the same. She had that um, beauty mark that everyone oh, calls yeah. the Monroe. Now, yeah, if you, if you get that that part of your face pierced. Yeah, but it's not really, like, even where she had it. The Her mole was, like, right here. And when people get that, they get it down here. Yeah, they go through the lip. And then they call it the Monroe, but it was really, like, closer to, like, the bridge of your nose. So they should call it, like, a low Monroe. Yeah, it should be called the low Monroe. <laughs> She was in a movie called Some Like It Hot. We mentioned that one earlier. Uh, and so was Tony Curtis, yeah. who we talked about. Um, have you heard of the sequel to Some Like It Hot? I'm familiar that there were talks of a sequel. Some Like It Hotter. Some Like It Hotter. Yeah, some Like It known. Hot too. Some Like It Hotter. You know what's funny? Well, you should say it. You're the one that figured it out. Say what? Well, like, yeah. we called, we were going to call the story Some Like It Hotter. We were we going to call it mm-hmm. Some Like It Hot 2, Some Like It Hotter. And then you put it into the chat GPT. I did. Chat GPT is in the chat now. Um, I just I just gave it the basic prompt of write a script for a sequel to the movie Some Like It Hot. And it called it. Right off the front, right off the rip. Title, Some, Some Like, like It Hotter. hotter. <laughs> You're doing well, You chat can't GPT. make this stuff up, folks. You can't. I can't wait till the Christmas was... episode when we get to do White Christmas 2, starring uh, Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye. Whiter Christmas? <laughs> it's just going to be Die Hard, but with Rosemary Clooney. Who do you think Mae West would enjoy talking to better? Well, are we assuming that she would probably talk to Hanley? Or do you think she would talk to that guy that doesn't even exist? <laughs> she would talk to a bottle of Hunch Ketchup. Oh, wait a minute. No. It would be... I'm sorry. I was thinking about... I'm jumping ahead of myself. Marilyn Monroe... Have you been hanging out in that time-traveling crate again? I've been again? sitting in a cave in the Him- Himalayas. <laughs> Here is Mae West with Tommy Handley, and then we'll do Monroe. Yeah. Also. Well, hello there, handsome. What's a fine-looking man like you doing in a place like this? Well, darling, I couldn't resist the allure of your captivating presence. It sounds like you have a way of turning any place into a paradise. Oh, flattery will get you everywhere, honey. But tell me. Have you ever seen a woman with such curves and sass as me? My dear, your curves could make a mountain jealous, and your sass could tame the wildest of bees. You're forced to be reckoned with. Why, thank you, sugar. But don't think you can just waltz in here and charm your way into my heart. I've seen men like you come and go. Ah, but my dear, I'm not like those other men. I'm a man who knows how to appreciate a woman of your caliber. I'm here to stay. Well, well, well. You certainly know how to talk the talk. But can you walk the walk, my dear? Rest assured, my enchanting lady... I can walk any path you lead me on. With you on my side, life will be a grand adventure. All right, you've piqued my interest, sugar. Let's see if you can keep up with this fiery dame. 
will make sparks fly, that's for sure. For sure. Oh, they... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with, without a doubt. Did you tell them to do that? I just said flirt. Yeah, but before that, they were already doing that. Yeah. Hanley knew how to talk to the ladies. He did. Guess you could say he had a handle on May. Why don't you... Why don't you see if you can handle me, Hanley? Let me grab your Tommy gun, <laughs> Mister Hanley. Who would we? Uh, who would we replace him with today? Mm. So it's so it's a comic who's affiliated with like you know war, I guess, or broadcast. I'm thinking like the USO. Freeman Gosden. Freeman Gosden. The the brainchild of Amos and Andy. Oh, oh, oh. Because they were in the 60s, right? And they're going back to the 30s. What year is it now? 2023. Okay. Maybe that's a little... The Mighty Boosh? <laughs> that's a very popular radio show in England. It's a radio show? Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought it was just the... It might have started off as a radio show. Mm. I don't know for sure. It might have been a TV show first, but it was definitely, it was 100% a radio show. But like, we're talking about war, wartime, wartime. uh, First one I think of was Bob Hope because of his morale. That's like the same era, though. It is, yeah. That's just like an Americanized version. This is tricky. Howard Stern. He was a popular radio uh, personality. He He's was on now. during the Gulf War, wasn't he? I'm going to say Howard Stern. Only because I think as a radio personality and assuming that they boost morale, I'm going to say that a lot of people listen to Howard Stern. And I feel like people uh, that are at war will probably try to listen to Howard Stern. I see that. That's just, yeah. that's, that's just a guess, but I know it's a very popular radio show and a lot of, we were saying earlier, what kind of, <laughs> what kind of humor, <laughs> what right? Kind of what do they listen to? to? Yeah. Yeah. Howard Stern, they, they probably listen to Rogan too. Oh, for sure. You want to make it Joe Rogan? Joe Rogan's mm-hmm. also actually a comedian. So I feel Ooh, like that, yeah. that does definitely make it a little closer. And he's also a very popular podcaster. Very popular. We're talking about the unprecedented numbers that Mm -hmm. Hanley was putting up with the British population. It's true. Joe Rogan puts up similar numbers with incels. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, I'd put Joe Rogan up there. There's a lot of fear factor. Could he be holding a bottle of vitamins? I like people holding (laughs) things. Yeah, Yeah, his his, uh, like alpha brain or whatever the hell it is. (laughs) Can he steal Uh, the ketchup out of... uh, Actually, I'd rather have him holding like a disgusting worm that he's is gonna feed someone. <laughs> oh yeah, because of fear factor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he could be holding a worm, and who's and who's standing next to him? Well, it's it's either whoever we're gonna replace Marilyn Monroe with. She's just gonna stay Marilyn Monroe. Wait, did we change? Uh, did we change Mae West? Yeah, we did. All right, well then we have to change Monroe. Yeah. She can't get special treatment. And I forget who we switched Berman for. You didn't save that? No. I We're trying to down. solve an evil cryptic mystery here. I know, and I'm just lost in the ether. <laughs> you know, I can't help but wonder uh, if Marilyn Monroe and Mae West were in the same room talking to each other i want to hear that conversation too. oh yeah yeah well our imagination has been typed in <laughs> our imagine's <laughs> typing wild and here it is may darling i must say your fashion sense is iconic as your wit how about we switch things up for a moment i'd love to slip into one of your glamorous gowns oh marilyn you're a vision of elegance yourself I'd be honored to see you in one of my signature dresses. But in return, I want to experience the allure of your famous white dress. 
It's a symbol of timeless beauty. Consider it done, May. You'll bring a touch of classic Hollywood glamour to that white dress, and I'll bring a dash of sensuality to your glamorous gowns. Let's make heads turn. They exchange outfits, each embracing the unique style of the other. May, this dress hugs my curves in all the right places. It's provocative, yet sophisticated, just like you. I feel like a true seductress. Marilyn, my dear, that white dress was made for you. It accentuates your radiant beauty and adds a touch of innocence. As if that's possible. You're the epitome of elegance. They strike poses, reveling in their transformed appearances. May, I must admit, wearing your dress makes me feel empowered. It's as if your spirit has infused me, and I can't help but exude confidence. And Marilyn, darling, slipping into your iconic white dress makes me feel like a timeless beauty. It's a reminder of the magic that can, that only you can create. They share a laugh, reveling ha, in ha, their ha. playful exchange. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> May, it's remarkable how fashion can transform us. But no matter what we wear, it's our undeniable presence and charm that truly captivates the world. Absolutely, Marilyn. Clothes may define our style, but it's the fire within us that ignites the hearts and imaginations of those who encounter our magnetism. They embrace their unique identities and continue to inspire generations with their distinct allure. Nay, I must admit, it's been quite the experience wearing your glamorous gowns, but I can't help but feel a bit overshadowed. It seems like all the attention is gravitating towards you. Oh, Marilyn, my dear, don't be disheartened. You know the saying, two bombshells are better than one. There's plenty of charm to go around. Besides, you have an allure that's all your own. I know, May, but it feels like every time I step out in one of your dresses, the men can't take their eyes off you. I'm craving a little bit of the spotlight, too, you know? Marilyn, my dear, I apologize if I've unintentionally hogged the limelight. You're a star in your own right, and no one can deny your mesmerizing presence. Let's find a way to balance our magnetic energies. They both change back into their original outfits, reclaiming their individual styles. May I appreciate your understanding? It's not that I don't admire your allure, but I want a chance to shine, too. Let's create a harmonious atmosphere where we both get the attention we deserve. You're absolutely right, Marilyn. We're both enchantresses. And the world should experience the magic of both our charms. Let's show them what happens when two powerful forces unite. They join forces captivating the room with their combined magnetism. Okay, so this is definitely a Cronenberg thing. (laughs) It won't stop with the body transmogrification. May I must say, it's a delight to share the stage with you. Together we're an unstoppable force that will leave everyone breathless. Marilyn, my dear, I couldn't agree more. Let's create a whirlwind of charm and captivate hearts everywhere. We'll make sure no one can resist our irresistible allure. They embrace their individuality while appreciating each other's unique appeal, striking a balance that leaves everyone mesmerized. And the crowd goes wild. Well, not wild, they're all in trance now. Yeah. Do the photographers know about all of this? The photographer. The photographer. I'm assuming the photographer is, like, the one using the book. (laughs) The photographer book? Uh, No, whatever book has the evil incantations that they're following, or the, you know... No, he doesn't have the book. The alchemaic? No, no, he, no. Someone else is pulling those puppet oh, strings. Oh, they're just telling the photographer what to do. Just just take the picture. Yeah, he doesn't know anything. They kill no. him afterwards, right? Yeah, that's why no one knows who took the picture. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, they threw him back in the box, and he just showed up somewhere in South America. Didn't know how to get back home. Part of that whole the whole cover cover up, Sergeant Pepper cover cover up. Who who are we uh, replacing Marilyn with? Marilyn Monroe. Who who? Uh, what's that one from Jennifer's Body? What's her name? Megan Fox. Megan Fox. Yeah. Or Lindsay Lohan. I feel like Megan Fox is holding up a little bit better than Lindsay Lohan, though. And if we're trying to, like, replace Marilyn at the quality level she was mm-hmm. at, aesthetically. Mm-hmm. Taylor Swift, to it, out of the pocket? She's probably ju- just as bad of an actor as Marilyn. Also, has been in movies. Has she? Yeah. I don't know, man. I almost just want to give it to Lindsay Lohan because I think she'd be do a better job acting. Well, she got. Uh, that was actually it. I just thought you were gonna say some after I said that. I, I said Lindsay Lohan too. You it did? might have sounded like a question, but it was. I was going with, oh, for the were, other Lindsay yeah. Lohan. Yeah, the <laughs> other one that's in Parent Trap. That's oh yeah. yeah. Well, it could be both of them. <laughs> What if Parent Trap was a Cronenberg movie? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I imagine that they were conjoined twins that sought each other out, right? That's how that happened, because yeah, of their but... psychic magic. Their evil psychic twin magic brought them back together. And then uh, after the parents get back together, the part that we don't see is Haley Mills joining back into the other Haley Mills. <laughs> Well, no, that's in uh, Parent Trap too. Still trapped. <laughs> For real this time. <laughs> All right. I like so, Taylor Swift. Oh, God. That was just a statement. I, 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 I wasn't saying... Marilyn uh, Monroe. Well, she sings and acts. And Marilyn Monroe is a better singer, better actor... Better performer, better model, better drug addict, better, probably better at being sober, too. Taylor Swift. Can I tell you something about Taylor Swift? I might upset a lot of Swifties here, but I'm in the process of making a T-shirt design with my buddy Jamie. It's going to be for a clothing company. Uh, And it is going to be a picture of Taylor Swift crying. And then underneath it, it's going to say, you just got gyllenhaal Jake Gyllenhaal. That should be who we replace Marilyn Monroe with. Phenomenal actor. Very attractive. Um, just iconic. Probably, probably posed in magazines, I'm sure. GQ. Cigar oh, sure aficionado. <laughs> I could see him doing a shoot for Cigar Aficionado. Even if he doesn't smoke cigars, I bet you he did one of those just for the suits. It wasn't you, you get to though. wear good suits and Cigar Aficionado. You have to, yeah. Do you have to? I feel like it. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you're just smoking a cigar and not an aficionado. Yeah. And you just... All these fancy suits are getting ruined for these photo shoots. Try clean only. They all just smell like tar. <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal was in that movie with uh, a lot of people. Um, who am I thinking of? Uh, she was also Catwoman. Oh. Yeah, I can't think of her name either. But she married that, like, billionaire, right? Don't know about that. She was in The Princess Diaries? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anna, Hath- Anna Hathaway. Anna Hathaway. Yeah, she's married to a super, super rich person. Good for her. I like her too. But come on. You you Jillen Hall, man. Jillen Hall. No, it doesn't have to be. Not if you're not feeling it. I'm not feeling Jillen Hall. All right. Can't be Maggie Jillen Hall. No way. No way. <laughs> That's impossible. Did Jennifer Aniston pose nude for, no. for Playboy? No, no, not that I know of. Marge Simpson oh, did. Oh, I'm just thinking of the, the cover of Rolling Stone, probably. Or was that Janet Jackson? That was Janet Jackson. Yeah. I go with Janet Jackson. She was everything for a long time. 
Or Madonna. I mean, really, if you think mm. about it, it's probably Madonna, Madonna has that low Monroe, too. Marge Simpson posed nude for Playboy. And you can see everything. And it's all, like, official, because Matt Groening signed it and everything. I wonder if he wow. just got tired of all those porn sites ripping it off. And yeah. like, so he was like, all right, Here's Jesus. the official. <laughs> but uh, she, she did replicate the iconic photograph, too. And it was in Playboy. I don't know if Marge Simpson got cover. But, yes, you can, I don't know, just throwing that out there. Last one from left field. Pamela Anderson. Sold. Pamela. I was just thinking about her last night for some reason. Do you want to keep telling the story? Or? Yeah, yeah. I was like, it might have even been in a dream, but I was thinking like that I don't really like remember why everyone thought she was so hot when Jenny McCarthy was like right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> and that wraps it up for this installment. Well, who did we settle on? Is it Madonna? Is it Jenny McCarthy? Is it Lindsay Lohan? Is it Haley Mills? Is it Marge Simpson? Is it a Cronenberg confabulation of all of them? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, I don't know. What you, do you, you think? You're not sold on Pamela? Oh, Pamela. Yeah. All right. Pamela Anderson. That's good. Yeah, I'm good with that. I think it fits because she was oh. everything for a minute, too. Mm hmm. Yeah. And she can't act. She can't sing. And people are all like, oh, I can't believe she she did this tape. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. She was one of the first uh, like famous sex tape leakers. Or not that she leaked it, but leaky. One, yeah, it happened. Leaky. Yeah. She was a victim of tape leakage. <laughs> can we just have a sex tape as? <laughs> can it just say Pam and Tommy and can that just be? <laughs> Let's do that. All right. Yeah. But it's still Pamela Anderson. It's it's Pamela Anderson Holding and Tommy it. on the on the box of oh, a VHS it's the, tape. It's, it's the sleeve. Yeah. But the tape is coming out a little bit. Yeah. So you can see yeah. that it's, it's a VHS, not a DVD yep. or anything. Yep. Yeah. Which is weird. Are going to be coming out the side? It doesn't come out the top. Uh, It's coming out the bottom. And it's like lifting up a little bit. It's just floating there. Or it's just, no, it's just a tape and it says Pam and Tommy. <laughs> Is Joe Rogan holding Can you it? Leave it up to the yeah, yes. He's holding the tape in one hand. The other hand, he's got the worm, worm going into whoever he's feeding it to. No, I don't think Joe Rogan should be holding the Pam and Tommy tape. I feel like the Pam, no, because then it's not it's not its own thing. It just needs to be a life size tape that says Pam and Tommy. It's a VHS tape, like a my size Barbie, but as a tape yeah an oversized vhs tape yes it says pam and tommy on it yeah. with their pictures on it it doesn't even have a label it's like the label's ripped off and it's just written on there it's written over the remains of the label with sharpie and it says pam and tommy <laughs> sorry marilyn <laughs> sorry we did this to you <laughs> <laughs> 